Now, last year, there was, of course, the big problem at the beginning of the race. Kevin Cogan, relatively new driver to Indianapolis, but nevertheless in a very competitive car on the front row of the grid with some great drivers alongside of them, perhaps the greatest of them all, A.J. Foyt. And we had a problem. Kevin Cogan ran into the side of A.J. Foyt and caused a great big problem in the rest of the field. There was much criticism given to this young man at that time, and it's been going on ever since. Sam Posey had the opportunity of going out to California to meet with him and talk about that accident. As the cars accelerate for the start of the race, watch Kevin Cogan swerve, collide with A.J. Foyt, then ricochet into the path of Mario Andretti, thus triggering a chain reaction all through the field. Neither Kogan nor anyone else was seriously hurt, but the dust had barely settled when the accusations began to fly. A disgusted Mario Andretti shoved Kogan, then made it clear he thought the young driver, in his inexperience, had made a driving error. Next came an exchange with A.J. Foyt. For Kevin Kogan, Indianapolis 1982 was a black day. It's been almost a year now since the accident, but in that time, no clear-cut explanation of what happened has ever come to light. We're here in the home of Kevin Cogan, who was the central figure in that incident. Kevin, set the scene for us, if you would. Uh, what happened was the right rear CV joint broke, which basically connects the gearbox, the powertrain, to the wheels, rudely speaking. And what happens is anytime something breaks in there on one side or the other, uh, because it's a solid rear end, both wheels are, are being powered. Uh, when one isn't, then you only have power going to one side of the car, which forces the car one way or the other. All right, now we have a monitor set up here. I'd like to have you have a look at that scene again. Okay, we're coming out of turn four, just starting to accelerate from a little bit of a slow pace, getting into second gear and accelerating. And as we come down, the part breaks here, and then it pushes the car to the right, the right CV joint let go, making the front of the car go to the right. And if you see in this angle here, watch the front of the car, and you'll see it actually sliding over to the right. It's a very good angle for that. And right here, as the part breaks, watch the front go to the right. Just like if you were turning to the right. And after I crean off the Foyt in front of Andretti, he actually uh, made the accident a lot less severe than it could have been. I could have... Uh, hit that inside wall much harder. Why didn't you come forward at that point with this explanation? Well, the reason why is actually something I can't answer personally, because if it was up to me, uh, I would have had a full explanation immediately. You know, as soon as we inspected the car, I wanted to make sure we checked the car over and everything like that. I was being very cautious. I didn't want to say anything uh, just off the top of my head, just to throw off anybody. So I. I was very careful to say, okay, let's look at the car, make sure before we say anything, and then we'll go to the press. Well, we went to look at the car, check it over, and it was basically what I had just described, and uh, it was decided not to say anything, which I thought was a mistake. Who decided that? Uh, Roger Penske decided that. It's uh, pretty difficult to go back a year and determine what caused an accident at the start of the race. Uh, it's unfortunate. I know Kevin has felt bad about this. Uh, I probably feels that was one of the reasons that he isn't driving for us this year. But when you look at what happened, we had an accident the first lap. Uh, those cars were run all season long with the same pieces on them. We didn't have that type of failure. And I hope it was that, because if that's the way he felt it is, that's probably what happened. And I think he's a great guy. In fact, I talked to Dan Cotter uh, about Kevin, and I said he did a good job for us. But when I had an opportunity at the end of the year to pick Al Unzer, who was a good road racer and had won three Indy 500s, I really didn't have any choice. Jackie, you were one of the first people to talk to Kevin back in the garage after the accident. What did he have to say to you then? He was very confused. He'd had a lot of static from a lot of other drivers. He, when I walked in, he asked me if I had seen the accident. I said yes. He said, did AG hit me? That was his first uh, question, which was one of confusion, obviously. And I said, no, but did something break in the car? And at that very moment, he picked up on that very abruptly in the hope that I think that there may be something in that. Now, whether something broke or not, I guess we'll never know. But he was grasping at straws at that time. Well, exactly. We may never know what happened there. But one thing is for sure. 
the career of a young driver at indianapolis was altered irrevocably by what did happen.